Saturday night, 11.55 p.m. Much of my Saturday nights and my weekends in general are spent in feeding things, catching up on some feeding. And so what I've been doing here is feeding fruit flies to some mantises. I've got these Neodenuria here, these African giant twig mantises. You can see that they sort of hold their bodies out in this uh, sort of stick-like posture. You see it push its front legs out like that. Um, and then these long, skinny, twig-like abdomens. Funny little mantises. They are currently feeding on Drosophila melanogaster fruit flies, the smallest fruit flies that are regularly available in the hobby. Um, these fruit flies are rather easy to work with. Uh, this is a fruit fly culture, and for those of you unfamiliar with fruit fly cultures, uh, this is the media down here at the bottom. That's what the fruit flies eat, and uh, these adult flies up at the top here, they are uh, hatched out from the pupae that are on the side of the cup here, and so the life cycle sort of works like this. The adults come down and they lay eggs in this media, and then uh, a few days later the eggs hatch and I don't know if you can see them in here but there are some larvae. These are what hatches out of the egg. Little maggots is what they essentially are. Larvae is a kinder word though. Um, the larvae, they feed in the media down here and then after a few days of feeding they make their way up. Uh, they get a little bit larger and larger before they do this but once they've achieved a certain size a size large enough to then pupate or metamorphosize, metamorphosize. They will come up to the side here and they will uh, build their little cocoon-like structures, the pupae, and then they will metamorphosize. Their body will undergo a complete metamorphosis. And then the adult flies emerge up here. Uh, one tip for people who are new to fruit fly cultures, never feed off all of your adult flies. That's a mistake people make pretty frequently, especially with smaller cultures. These large ones tend to have a lot of flies in them um, on arrival. Uh, and if you don't have a ton of mantises, uh, a large culture like this can really be overkill. You can see how many flies are in there right now. But so if you're if you only have a few mantises, buy a smaller culture because this is really overkill. And there's a lot of living things in in this uh, container right here. And try to be respectful of their lives as well. I mean, at the same as your mantis, each one of these things is an insect. And uh, you know, there's a lot of people who feel bad for for crickets and things like that. Well, I mean. Can you imagine? <laughs> Can you even imagine how many lives are going to uh, be reproducing in here uh, through the course of the life of this culture? Uh, these things generally last four to six weeks. Um, as time goes on, the larvae consume the media down here, and there's less and less media. It dries out a little bit, and the larvae uh, that are produced are a little bit smaller. And so one of the tricks that a lot of people don't know is that an older culture produces smaller flies. And so if your mantises are a species that's very small, use an older culture. Plan ahead, if you can, to have an older culture available when you're going to have some mantises hatching from an egg case, for example. There are lots of other things that uh, like little tiny baby jumping spiders, uh, they can't hardly tackle by themselves a single fruit fly that is from a new culture like this because the flies are really nice and healthy and large. But from an older culture, the fruit flies, uh, their mass can be like maybe a sixth the size of a, of a newly made culture's flies. So a couple things to keep in mind there. Um, what I do to make it easier is dump some of the flies into a, an empty container like this. And the reason for that is um, if you forget to take the lid, if you forget to put the lid back on, you know, after a few minutes, I mean, they're really coming out fast. So as I'm feeding things, I can play this game right here and just kind of tap them in. But Sometimes they, they will start to come out very quickly, and uh, it can be a problem. So if you're only working with about a hundred of them instead of a thousand of them, uh, forgetfulness isn't quite as costly. So 
this is what I do. I'm just tapping these cultures down. I'm tapping a few flies in here. I'm moving through this process very quickly. Um, I have a lot of experience doing this, of course, and so, you know, you always want to keep an eye on the mantises. Different mantis species are more or less prone to um, bolting as you have their containers open. This is a different species right here. So I'm feeding these mantises over here. I've actually gone through these already, and I thought, oh, I better turn the camera on and show people on YouTube what I'm doing. I've got three species of mantises that live in this particular bin here until they either move to larger containers or they move on to customers. Um, I've got these fly pupae here too. These are house fly pupae. These were melanogaster. And I guess before I talk about the, this larger kind of fly, there's another kind of fly called Drosophila heidii, and they are flightless flies. These melanogaster are actually wingless. They are GMO. They've been modified to um, to be wingless uh, by geneticists, by scientists, and uh, so they will never produce a single winged one unless uh, accidentally you leave the lid off or for some reason a, uh, a wild fruit fly, and this is more common in the uh, late summer months when fruit is on the ground outside, but they'll try to wiggle in there and uh, it only takes one of them and then uh, you'll open up the lid to this one day, and you see how I'm tapping it down there? That's the trick. You knock them down to the bottom. People are always asking me, well, how, how do I how do I open a fruit fly culture? The flies keep coming out, and you know, it, it is actually really easy. You just kind of do this, and you know, I can feed right out of this thing, and then tap it down. You just make sure in between each mantis that you're feeding that you're tapping it back down, or you're going to have problems. This is also a good time if your media has become too dry down there to spray down the side of it. Add a little bit of water and then kind of tip it like this a little bit, making sure you're either tapping it down here or you're tapping it up here. So that's how you use one of those. And so the Heidi Eye are a little bit bigger than these. The Heidi Eye are flightless and so they have wings. Uh, these ones in my hand are wingless, but the flightless ones are larger than this. They have about twice the mass, maybe three to four times the mass, depending on how fresh the flies are in one container versus another. Um, and uh, they have been modified uh, genetically so that their wing muscles no longer function. And so while they still have wings, they are not capable of using them for flight. Um, so these other ones here, once once you've graduated your mantises from smallest melanogaster to larger fruit flies, the Heidei, and then you end up with a mantis that is this size right here. Now I just dropped a couple fruit flies in there, and you know I can drop a bunch of fruit flies in there and feed this mantis for you know another instar or two uh, molts. Uh, when it's a little bit bigger, it will still eat the fruit flies, but at about the time they're this size here, and you can see this in comparison to my finger, they are ready to start eating house flies the next size up from the larger fruit flies. And those, I get these pupae right here. These are house fly pupae, and they are the same as the pupae here on the side of this, but instead of being fruit flies, they're house flies. House flies are larger, and so they are these sort of reddish, purple, brownish um, pupae, and that's essentially the cocoon stage, uh, the stage where the larvae have uh, gone into uh, the uh, waiting stage for metamorphosis and before the adult fly emerges. And of course, amazing things are happening in there in the same way that a caterpillar pupates into the cocoon, and then out from that emerges the adult butterfly. Same concept here. And so, you know, there, there are probably, mm, I would say, a thousand pupae in the bottom of this 32 ounce cup. And I keep these in the refrigerator. I date them from uh, when I get them, and then I keep them in the refrigerator so that I, I know what's going on with them. Um, that pretty much summarizes uh, how I spend my Saturday nights and uh, how I feed my small mantises. Uh, 
Actually, I'll tell you about these cups here a little bit too. I've got some coconut fiber down in the bottom of them to help maintain humidity. And then on these lids here, I have, uh, my employees actually have um, glued with super glue these little paper, uh, paper towel squares. And that allows the mantises to molt. Um, if I can find one here that still has a molt attached to the lid. Mantises molt with the aid of gravity. And so they hang from the top of their cage or a branch in nature. And get down there. And uh, with the aid of gravity, uh, a little split forms in uh, back behind their head on their thorax. And the entire animal emerges from that split just sort of let gravity pull them down. Is that one? No. Um, they let gravity pull them down out of their old skin and then while they are, um, I have this trouble finding one here. I saw, I saw one lid a few moments ago before I turned the camera on. One lid that had two molts on top of it. The mantis had molted twice. Well, another thing I could have been doing this whole time is looking for a cup where the uh, molt had fallen to the bottom. Well, I'm giving up on this, and that's when you find it right. I think I only have two more to check at this point anyway. Oh, fail. Oh, gosh, I got a bunch of bites. But <laughs> it's all right, because I got this thing. <laughs> oh, you little biter. Did he get you? Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Beep. I probably got more than one in there. You think you got it like three pounds of gold in there in that yeah, mark right. too. There's another one just floated right up to the top. Oh, and there's a water strider there too. Oh, there, oh my God, there's a million of them in here. Oh, oh you, where did those come from? They <laughs> came out of my net. <laughs> out of your mud? <laughs> out of my mud. Dude, they've got back swimmers and mud swimmers. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Is this your first collecting trip? Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of little tricks, lots of little things we've learned. Um, you know, one, one thing that we, we relearn on a regular basis is to always keep an eye on this cup when the lid is off because when these fruit flies start coming out because your attention was diverted for just a, just a few seconds, you see how rapidly they're climbing out. And uh, that's a lot to pick up. But, you know, I mean, I've, I've gotten really, really good at that. Let me show you what happens here. Um, I'm just going to let them let them start falling out there. And so when, when that happens, uh, they get all over this white counter. I do recommend a, working on top of a white surface, by the way. It sure makes, the, sure makes things easier when you can't see what's going on. So I just flick them like this. Super, super simple. I just fed one mantis. Yeah, that one right there. Two mantises. Three mantises just that simple so you know killing two birds with one stone I cleaned up a mess that I made and I fed three mantises at the same time I think that about sums it up thanks for watching